Hello, I'm Ryan and uh, normally I'd be happily welcoming you to the ball and after here. Unfortunately, this isn't really a time to be in an upbeat, jovial mood. Early this evening, we learned, and we were recording this Sunday night, we learned of the passing of Kobe Bryant and his daughter Gianna, along with three others, possibly a few more, it's not entirely clear at the time of recording, uh, as a result of a helicopter accident. Um, we know that he was on his way to bring Gianna to a basketball game and um, it's quite apt really given what he's done or what he did and it's still hard to talk about him in the past sense in his career that was just really beginning his second career after basketball the timing for me was interesting and uh, it's probably the safest word i can use see here in ireland this was a weekend of celebration of the sport we had our national cup finals the highlights being the senior men's and women's but we had so many games all the school finals across all the levels a b c all the underage finals as well, under 18, under 20, 16s, and you know, we had all the lower league finals too. And it was just this big celebration, and we had our last game tonight, it was the Women's Senior Cup final, and it was, you know, very emotive, great game, um, won by Colester. And, you know, it was a great end to a weekend, and I uh, said goodbye to my colleagues in the broadcast, and went outside to get a taxi back, I had to go to my office, uh, and just flipped my phone open and saw the news that you all saw and I had a reaction not dissimilar to how all of you was this can't be real and me being a journalist my first thought was maybe my friends share the thing from a fake news site that's pretending to be a real news site but you know like the rest of you we clicked through we realized that it wasn't what we hoped it was the worst case scenario the Mamba uh, I just want to talk a bit about him how I like to think of how we remembered him and like, I wasn't a Lakers fan, <laughs> putting it mildly. But it's kind of what made the Mamba almost fun to watch. I loved to talk to some Lakers fans about how it was for them. Um, but for me, it was, he was a player you loved to root against. And I mean that in the nicest possible way, because you were afraid of him. You were afraid of what he could do. He was the villain for your team, no matter who your team was. If it wasn't the Los Angeles Lakers. Because you knew that no, there were no lead of yours was safe. You were up against the ultimate competitor. I have a saying I use in relation to a few things in life, which is uh, to chew dreams and shit miracles. Kobe's Mamba mentality, if ever there was one, he was. No one chewed, chewed dreams and shot miracles like him when it came to his approach to the game of basketball. He was just a pure competitor, simple as that. He always believed in himself, always believed he could win, and that was kind of the thing. There was a little bit of, you know, the Melandro footballer in him as a basketball player. Like, he didn't think there was a shot he could not make. And, you know, he wasn't always right, obviously, but he was right often enough. 18 All-Star appearances, five championships, and also taking over the toughest mantle there was, really, in history of basketball on an off-court perspective, which was being the on-court face of the NBA after Michael Jordan, which is, you know, it was an impossible task, and he rose to it as well as anybody could have, and he did a phenomenal job building his own legacy, his own status as an icon. And, you know, that's something and that came from that competitor spirit and, you know, that mentality he talk about and it sort of gets used loosely almost, but you see it in a lot of players, like that sort of, you know, determination, you know, that, that, that refusal to believe that defeat is there. And if it was just as basketball, we would be very sad, obviously, but obviously there's so much he's done since his own game. And he was really just getting going, starting it. There was the beautiful short film, Dear Basketball, which uh, I was lucky enough to help out a friend with coming up with questions for Kobe at an event Kobe was going to because my friend had nothing, nothing to do with basketball a couple of years back when they were sort of promoting it. There was his work really in promoting the game globally. Like I th you have to go to the 2008 Olympics for to see the real impact of the iconography where him, we talk about like how the other players deferred to him, which is obviously great and realizing this is the time to go to Kobe to win this final against Spain. But... I don't think I remember that Spanish team as much if it wasn't for what Kobe brought to that USA team, to that Redeem team, because he showed that this was a serious American side. This was a team which was trying to, you know, show it was the best of the best, and Kobe was never not going to demand to be included amongst the best of the best, and he had more than earned his place there. And Spain in defeat became memorable because of the fight they put up against a team playing with Kobe, playing like that. And, you know, so even, like, you know, in victory, you could, like, put another team over in some respects. And then, you know, I, I, I was thinking of a few bits here because I'm from Barland. Basketball isn't enormous. I was surrounded by basketball people 
right up until the moment I found out about Kobe. But uh, the great thing about friends, uh, just so many immediately started texting, DMing, kind of going, how are you, how are you okay? And like, they knew I didn't know Kobe. I'm just a journalist, a fan. Uh, you know, you can't be both. And they, said they, they realized this is a thing that's going to affect, you know, our buddy. And that was one of the beautiful things about it, that, you know, people in this moment of tragedy for all basketball fans realized just how much of an impact Kobe had around the world. Like, people with no interest in the sport we love immediately figured, this is going to affect our friend. And I'm sure a lot of you are a similar experience wherever you're watching this. And, uh, you know, in the hours since, uh, it took me about three and a half hours to do it. It was an hour's work in my day job because, like the rest of you, my head's been everywhere. Uh, you know, we saw so many touching tributes. Uh, what Maccabi did, really the speed of getting it done, because obviously there have been so many beautiful tributes in the NBA, the Spurs and Raptors being the one that obviously jumped out early. But, like, seeing what happened in Tel Aviv where... You know, at half time, I think it was, uh, I'm sure Maccabi fans can correct me, it was at a break in the game anyway, and um, the Maccabi fans just started chanting Kobe's name once they heard the news. And, you know, then obviously Maccabi's own people, you know, during the fourth quarter had, and I had to, they had to rush it, but they still got it together, a touching tribute to Kobe on their uh, Jumbotron. And, you know, to see that there was this need, this immediacy, we have to recognize this moment now. Obviously, my heart goes out to everybody, you know, affected by this tragedy directly. But um, I want to talk about the basketball players who had to go to work tonight, because obviously a lot of them found out about this as they are about to go on the floor of games. And NBA mostly, but not just there. And I'm not going to say if it was right or wrong to play those games, because not because I'm trying to be hedging, but I genuinely don't know. But I do know that uh, the players going out there did a great job tonight on Sunday in paying tribute to Kobe in what were phenomenally emotional circumstances, stuff that, uh, like, we've all been through tough times in our life, but um, I can't begin to contemplate having to go in front of a live TV audience and do my job, but I like to think that the Mamba mentality with Kobe, he'd been kind of going, come on, it's time to play the game, this is what we do, this is what we're about. So I like to think that, you know, part of him would be happy that the games did go on, although, again, I'm not going to speak for a man who's no longer with us and who did so much. But, uh, yeah, you know, that was really touching. But one thing I want to talk about before we get on to the last bit of this, which is, uh, through all the messages, there was one tweet that really jumped out to me, and I want to, I don't normally pull my phone out during these videos, but I'm going to make an exception here, because I think it got the emotion and the confusion of the issue we're dealing with across so beautifully. It was from Malcolm Delaney, who's with Barcelona, formerly the Hawks. He's played all over the world in China, in um, Russia, He's played in uh, France and uh, Ukraine as well. And obviously he's played all over the world with those teams from there. And Malcolm tweeted not too long after he'd have heard, I don't know about any other Hoopers, but this Kobe thing got my body feeling weird. It meant so much to the game and the future of men's and women's basketball. I always envisioned Kobe being the old Bill Russell on the sidelines. Old and being around the game forever, sharing knowledge. And, you know, that's the thing. Like, Kobe was a student of the game. There's no question that, even though he played... His style, he was like encyclopedic when it came to sort of his knowledge. And with the international game in particular, we saw that with his fantastic work as an ambassador for the FIBA World Cup this past summer. And we all know that with those sort of things, it can be just a show up and smile job. Kobe really put his effort into that because his attitude was, this is a thing I'm doing, I've committed to, I'm going to do it. That's what he did. He was a competitor. And it wasn't just about beating someone, it was about beating the idea of not doing a job well which, you know, is, is, is touching, it's, it's emotive. But, you know, one thing obviously with this that we've all started seeing, but I think is important to say to you all as we finish this video, he was a young man, he was 41, like he was only a couple of years older than me, and uh, we don't know whatever is gonna happen to anyone we love and care about. We've all, I'm sure, endured our shock suffering over the years, but, um, Hug those close to you tonight if you can, and if they're not close to you, in the literal sense, message them, let them know, give them a call. Just tell them you're, you're there, you're caring about them. You know, do that. And if you do that, you're, you're showing your own mama mentality. That's about all i got to say. Our fun videos will return later this week. But for now, I just want to say thank you, Mamba.